Hi, loved ones. This is Bishop Clement Amankwesini coming to you live on Facebook. This is Restful Living, a life worth living. I trust the Lord that it is well with you and you guys are doing great over there. And those of you who follow me and are sharing these restful messages um, to, to everybody, restful living messages, God bless you and God increase you. And I trust it's been a blessing to you. All right. And so thank God for your life this Wednesday evening again. And here we are face to face one more time being a blessing to you. I have a word of the Lord for you that is going to bless you and just expand you and make you break every limit of your life. Discovering who you are. Who you are is very crucial in giving you rest and knowing that there is no, nobody like you. All right. So um, we want to get into God's word. And, you know, the subject of discussion is finding your God-given shape. All of us have a shape. All of us have a way that God designed us. You might not have discovered it, but hey, I'm giving you just, just clues and uh, hints and, uh, and just some guidelines as to how to find out. I don't have the absolute, you know, the absolute on this is the way and that is the way, but we can, can just glean through scriptures and give you some hints here and there so you know how God shaped you and you follow through and be that because God has shaped you in a certain way which is very unique and as we go along may God help us or may God help you discover who you are and just flow along that direction and it's going to be a blessing to you and to mankind in Jesus name all right and so God bless you for joining this program or this streaming is restful living why because Jesus said we should come unto him. The reason why Jesus also asks us to come, we should come unto him. all who labor and are heavy laden, all who are burdened, that's Matthew 11 and 28, all who labor and are heavy laden, he says, I'll give you rest. And he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me and you shall find rest for your souls. It's very exciting to have restful, restfulness because restfulness brings increase but stress can even kill you, all right? So in Jesus' name, I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to understand. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Let's pray. I pray that you just open the eyes of the understanding of all those who are watching and that they'll be blessed by this. Thank you for your speaking blood. Thank you for the plans that you have for us, the plans, those plans that are not plans of evil, but of good to bring us a hope and a future. Thank you, Father. Bless these ones that are here. Open the eyes of those who are listening today. And I pray that someone will discover and find themselves on how you designed them and flow with it. I pray that the insecurity in the lives of many will be shattered. And I pray that Lord will embrace the shape that you have made them to be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're there and you're watching me or you've been watching for the past weeks, we've been talking about finding your God-given shape. And it's based on the account where Jeremiah was sent by God to go to a porter's house and to see he had a message for Israel. And he sent Jeremiah to the porter's house to see how the porter was, you know, was forming a pot from a clay. And we've, we've discovered from scripture, right? That, listen, it, unless God starts shaping you, you are just a piece of clay. Until God starts shaping you, you are just a piece of clay. And the shaping is ongoing. It, it might decide to mold you in a certain way, mold you in another way. But hey, in the end, you will discover how God has shaped you and you flow with it. And it gives you a sense of identity. It gives you a sense of security. And you're not in competition with anyone, but you're just following what God has assigned you uh, to, to accomplish and to do. That's what it is about. That's what finding your God-given shape is about. There are so many people out there who are still struggling 
with what to do. And some people are just watching other people do something and they also follow through, even though they don't understand, even though they are shaped, they are not designed to do that. All right. I know a God-given shape can fit into an overall vision of something, but hey, your uniqueness should be maintained. You can never speak like someone else. You can never do certain things like someone else because of the way you were shaped. And that's what we're talking about. And so I want you to be blessed as we go through this. So we're talking about finding your God-given shape and what are some of the things that can help you find your God-given shape. Now, the last time we, we realized that one of the keys to finding your God-given shape in this note, all right, is the fact that you have to be aware, all right? You, when you are aware, you, it, it's an awareness. It's not like going out to find out and asking people, uh, who, who am I, you know? When David, when we're going to use David's uh, um, account, David's encounter with Goliath as a typical example, all right? It, it, when David approached Goliath, he did not think it through. It was based on re it wasn't based on reason, but he was aware that something was setting with him. So that awareness, that awareness inside of you, that awareness that there's something about me that I can I can whack this this giant is very important. That awareness that I can beat this giant, that awareness that it seems I can do this thing, and there is a name for it. A French name called déjà vu, déjà vu, déjà vu. It's like something that has already you, you've already seen, something that is seen already, if I might so put it. Déjà vu is very important. It happens to all of us. For some reason, you you have an encounter, you 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 face a situation, and as it were, as if you can you can do it. It's not based on reason, but it's like it seems like I can do this thing. I don't know if you <laughs> love what I don't know if you have experienced that before, but there are certain situations, there are certain times when you meet a, a certain situation and it's like inside of you all of a sudden you think, hang on, I, I can do this. It's a way of discovering your God given shape. You see, it's, it's very important. And I'm going to read from, from scriptures and, and not only scriptures, but some things I've written down that's going to be of benefit to you, that you can depend on the deja vu. That happens to all of us. Something is like you've already done before, even though you've, you can't pinpoint where or when or whatever. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. It's fantastic. And so I want to explore this deja vu and let, let you know what it means and, you know, what it means. All right. And I've written down some things here. You know, some people's lives sometimes mirror some experiences in, in, in mirror some experiences uh, in their own lives. You know, when some something is mirrored back to you as if it's it's happened before. I mean, it happens. All right. The the day David's life changed forever was the day he met Goliath. That day. David's life changed forever was the day he met Goliath. As of that time, he was being faithful in keeping his father's sheep. If you are used to, or if you've read the story of uh, uh, David, you realize that at a point, he was a shepherd boy. I mean, amongst his siblings, he was the least considered. I mean, the dad uh, had barely even forgotten about him. You know, it was, I don't know if some of you feel that way sometimes among your siblings or the family where you are not regarded as if you are just a shepherd boy. Go take care of a few sheep. That's what the Bible says. He was sent to go take care of a few sheep. And, you know, his brothers were honored to be in the army. And during those days, if you were in the army, you were privileged, you know. You were privileged. You were much more honored than shepherds. And David there was just minding his own business and being faithful in taking care of the few sheep his dad had um, given him charge over. Okay? That day when he went into the battlefront, he didn't go as a soldier. Remember? 
But as a messenger, David did not go. You know, his father sent him to uh, send, he sent him to go deliver cheese sandwich, as it were, to his brothers on the battlefront. And he went as a messenger. His dad sent him. He left the sheep with um, a caretaker and just took off and went. So D David didn't go as it were, as a soldier. David didn't go as it were, as somebody who knew how to fight. He went, he just went as a messenger. And you see, at that place, it was a defining moment. He had met a situation. Here comes out the giant who was threatening. He was just threatening Israel. And everyone, every soldier had cowered in, including the king himself, King Saul. And when he got there, it's like something snapped in him. That's what it's called deja vu. Something snapped in me. How can a shepherd boy instantly snap in a battlefront? Oh, that is what is deja vu. Then you get to know that I think I've been shaped in a certain way, but I didn't know it until a situation arose. Glory to God. You see, so situations, things that happen around us, it could be bad, ugly, you know, what have you has a way of igniting something inside of you. The thing that you say you can't, you'll be surprised that when you're exposed to them, all of a sudden something will just snap for you to know that inside of you something wells up. And you say, mm, hang on, it seems I can handle this. It seems I can manage this. It's called deja vu. As if you already know that thing. As if you already know that you can fix this thing. It's called deja vu and it happens to all of us. So don't cry when you face battles, when you face encounters. Don't cry. The real shape, <laughs> your real shape is going to emerge and you're going to be surprised at yourself. May God surprise you and may you surprise yourself that those things that you said you couldn't, now it seems you can. My God, it's going to happen to someone listening to me right now. It's going to happen. It's called deja vu. You already know within you that this thing, as if it's happened before, and I can do it. I can handle it. I can manage it. May deja vu happen to you in Jesus' name. Now listen to this. Listen to what I've written. That's a way of discovering your shape, okay? I said the day David went onto the battlefront, he didn't go as a soldier but as a messenger. The major defining difference between David and his son, Solomon, was Adullam. He has been, and we'll, we'll visit that. I'll, I'll let you know that. So let's shelve that for the time being. But you see, destiny always oppressed by deja vu. Already saying, destiny. The destiny, the way you were shaped, always oppressed by deja vu. You know, <laughs> you will not know what is inside of you and how powerful you are until maybe something happens. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't know, but something definitely is gonna happen and will ignite your real shape, how God designed you, and you'll be shocked at what you can do. That would be a mean, I may be talking to somebody there who doesn't still know their shape because they keep running away from situations. They keep running away from battles. They keep running away from challenges. And as long as you run away from challenges, you never discover what you can do because those challenges are permitted by God to ignite your shape in you. Glory to God. All right? Glory to God. Deja vu is to be comfortable. Now, I'm defining it more. Deja vu is to be comfortable with something that you've never attempted. Mm. One more time. Deja vu is to be comfortable with something that you've never attempted because, because it somehow feels familiar to you. When something feels familiar, I mean, you, you are just comfortable with something. It could be, it could be ma manufacturing something. It could be mending something. It could be, you know, and it becomes so familiar to you. You're like, oh, I, I didn't know I could do that. It's called deja vu. It means God shaped you to do that particular thing. I mean, we've heard of stories about doctors who became musicians, doctors who became in, uh, uh, entertainers, 
and rather the entertainment they discovered was was fetching them more than the, they being medical doctors. You know, all these interesting stories that you find around. I mean, you find some professors just forget about everything and start doing some business somewhere. Some professors stop everything and start pastoring. You know, something maybe have ignited Mr. Professor's heart that some students maybe came and they needed help. And all of a sudden, he found himself just encouraging them, just strengthening them. And all of a sudden, he realized that his words, maybe biblical encouragement, has changed their lives. Then he realized, hang on, it seems like I'm a pastor. What am I doing here as a professor? What am I doing here? You see? So things like that happens in life, child of God, loved one. Things like that happen. You know, I... I never also envisaged me becoming a pastor. Yes, 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 yes. Never thought one bit that I could be a pastor and be shepherding and thousands of people now who have come into the kingdom as a result of that. Never thought. It happened, I remember, one day when I just went to church and uh, it seems like the pastor was not around there was so much trouble in the church. When I became a, a born again, um, experienced my spiritual birth, <laughs> I gave my life to Jesus and was going to church. And there was so much trouble in the church that it seems that day, I remember, the pastor didn't show up. Somewhere in 1979, I'm sure. The pastor didn't show up. And we were asked to encourage. We were all asked to just come share something to encourage people. And in my small knowledge, little knowledge, I went to share. And that was it. Something just ignited inside of me. It's like, whew, hang on. And the way the word of the Lord came, and I started sharing. And I got excited about sharing. About, you know, and gradually, it's like, oh. And people got blessed. And people were saying, you, you, your word encouraged me. Your word just, and I said, hang on. And I kept on and on and on and on and on and on. And I really discovered that, hey, <laughs> it seems I've been called to shepherd people, to lead people. Uh, and, and, and everywhere I went, I could just raise a, a, a group of people to start a church, whether in school, whether at home. And then I realized that the apostolic flair was also coming gradually. You know, so when situations, there are certain situations that happen that ignites your shape, how your God-given shape. And I'm saying, don't run away from challenges. Don't run away from situations. Don't cower when you make something. Don't say, I can't do it. It could be that defining moment for you to discover something that all along God wanted you to do. All along, God wanted you to discover about yourself that I called you to be this and you have this gift and you have this talent, but you haven't used it. So may deja vu happen to you. Deja vu happen to you. It's like, yes, I can do this. It seems like I can do it. As to how, you might not go, to have, you might not have been to school concerning that. You might not have taken that course concerning that situation that happened to you that has become a deja vu. Yes, because it was just designed by God. It's something that God has put inside of you. Like, <laughs> is it a GPS or something? you just discover. That's it. You just discover it because that situation ignited something inside of you. Glory to God. I trust I'm being a blessing to you. Oh, come on. Don't ever forget this deja vu, this word. It's a French word. Deja vu is a French word. That means already seen. Already seen. Deja vu, already seen. All right? Blessed be God. All right, so we have said that deja vu is to be comfortable with something that you've never attempted, okay? It makes you feel you can do something but can't explain why it's so. It makes you feel that you can do something but you can't explain why it's so. It's called deja vu. When you are faced with, a, with, with situations that demand a decision, you have to ask yourself, has this situation occurred to me before? Mm. You must ask yourself. It could be physical. It's never happened. But it's like, 
within you, you know, it's like, I don't remember where I did this, but it seems like I can do it. Glory to God. It's called deja vu. If something has occurred to you before, which looks like a deja vu, you don't even need to pray about it. Wow. You don't even need to pray about it. I can remember David going to pray about killing Goliath. No, he just snapped. He just snapped. He just told them, I, I, I think I can, I can, <laughs> I, I think I can, <laughs> I can slay this giant. I think I, I, I was born to slay this giant. You know, it started kicking in when he started killing the bear and the lion when he was taking care of the few sheep. He never went to school. School. Can you imagine that David going to school of killing lions, how to kill lions and how to kill bears? He, he never. But you see, a situation arose where he was just keeping sheep uh, uh, and a lion showed up. <laughs> a lion showed up and with his bare hands to rip the lion and kill the lion. Where, where did you learn that, David? Where did you learn this? It was a deja vu. Something just, you know, <laughs> something just shifts inside of you. And then you just act without reasoning. Boom! And then when it happens, you go, whoa, did I do that? That's called deja vu. And that situation is going to happen. Something is going to happen in your life. And when there's a challenge, take it on. Take it on. Don't cower. Don't run away. For running away will not make you discover your shape, your God-given shape. Don't run away from that situation. Don't run from that situation. When it happens, go inside of you and know why has this thing happened. It won't kill you. Nothing of the enemy. If Christ in you is the hope of glory. If greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, we Christians, we believers have the Holy Ghost, the anointing. Come talking, hey, blood bought, sanctified, and we are able to do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that particular area, your particular shape, comes with something that will happen to you which is unique. That's why sometimes some of you think that things that have happened to you is so unique, it's different, people don't understand that your situation is different. It's different because you were shaped differently. If it happened to you, if it came your way, God knows you can overcome it. God was allowing that thing to bring about that, that, that which you were, how you were shaped. Glory to God. That's how it happens. So those of you who been running away from brother, you cry and all that, you still haven't discovered who you are. And today, I'm infusing in, inside of you the spirit of a warrior, the spirit of a, someone who can, I'm telling you, it settles everything. It settles you. Then from there on, my goodness, your kingdom expands. You know what, what, what was at stake when David killed Goliath? You know what was at stake? Almost half of the kingdom. Half of the kingdom. Glory to God. Let me quickly say this, and then I'll be ready to wind up. Everything God wanted, now listen to this, child of God, listen to this. Everything God wanted you to do and everywhere God wanted you to go was and is already inside of you. Mm, listen to that. I have to continue with this next week. Yeah, everything God wanted you to do, listen, and everywhere God wanted you to go was and is already inside of you. Mm. Everywhere, everything. That's why I say it's like a, a spiritual GPS. <laughs> a spiritual GPS that has been put inside of you. And that's why God leads you like that. And you start moving and the GPS starts speaking to you. Uh, uh, turn right. If you come, your car stands still. GPS will stop speaking. The GPS will stop speaking. When you start moving into certain territories, move until the GPS just says, turn left, turn right, or stop. You know, you can go ahead or something. All that is, God has a spiritual GPS inside of you. 
Everywhere you have to go, everything you have to do has already been infused inside of you. And now you're on the pathway of discovering it. Oh my, that's it. That's it. It's never too late to be right. It's never too late to be right. I borrowed that from Bishop Oyedipo, David Oyedipo. He says, it's never too late to be right. The moment he said that, something snapped in me. It's never too late to be right. You have missed it several times. You have missed the opportunity, as it were, as if you've missed it several times. But now, it's your time, loved one. And I speak to you in the name of Jesus, that you rise up and face every situation. For therein lies your God-given shape. Then you know that, mm, like David, is going to say, whoa. I didn't know I was born, I was shaped a warrior. I didn't know I was shaped like this. I didn't know I was shaped, I didn't know I could kill a bear. I didn't know I could kill a lion until such situations happen. He always snapped. Have you noticed, child of God, that as if he was shaped, David was shaped to, to conquer bullies. <laughs> it's interesting, it just occurred to me. David was shaped to conquer bullies. You know, the, the lion is a bully, the bear is a bully, and Goliath was a bully. And that was his God-given shape. David hated bullies. David hated any army that would want to torture his people. And he flipped and snapped any time such things happen. And so he discovered who he was, a warrior, a captain, an anointed king too who really conquered many nations and countries. May you also conquer. May you also be a conqueror. May you discover your God-given shape through deja vu, something that has been infused in you and which you are yet to discover. It's inside of you. If you believe it, it's going to happen. Spend time with God to help you. Spend time. Everything, everywhere you go, Everything you have to do has already been put inside of you. It's not just about to go and discover it outside. It's already inside of you. All you have to do is to spend time with him, child of God. And we're going to go further in this story. You realize I couldn't even quote any scripture. <laughs> That's just the introduction. Deja vu, all right? Finding your God-given shape. One of the keys is deja vu. And we're going to find out next week. It's going to be exciting. So stay tuned and don't miss next week. All right. So God bless you for watching today. I pray for you. Oh, I always want to pray for you. I bless your home. I bless your family. I bless the work of your hands. May the Lord bless you and increase you. May the Lord open your eyes to discover all these things that is put inside of you that you are yearning to. Yeah, I mean, some of you are just struggling and knowing it's like there's something inside of you that needs to come out. You don't know how. May the Lord God Almighty, my goodness, by his spirit, help you to discover. Pray and say, Lord, open my eyes. And I pray that your eyes will be open, that your, that your spiritual eyes, the eyes of your understanding will be open, that you know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That was, the, that was Paul's prayer. And I pray the same thing for you. You will discover who you are. You are not down. Like Gideon, you also discover who you are. Like Gideon, may God send an angel to speak to you and to just speak that thing in you. Come alive in the name of Jesus. And that is the word of the Lord to you. That there's going to be a commotion and pandemonium of discoveries that shall come your way. And may God help you and bless you and keep you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, I always want to end my broadcast by giving um, people the opportunity to give their lives to Jesus. Th that's the beginning. That's the beginning of the discovery. It begins with knowing Jesus and receiving him in as your Lord, Savior, Leader, forgiver and what have you so if you are there watching me and you want to do that i want you to pray this prayer with me yeah take it as your own prayer say dear jesus i believe that you died for me and you rose again 
the third day for my justification. Forgive me of all my sins and cleanse me with your blood. I receive you into my heart to be my Lord, my Savior, my healer, my leader, my forgiver. Let your grace keep me. Thank you, Father, for making me your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friend, if you've prayed that prayer, let's hear of you. And get a Bible and find a Bible-believing church and attend. And you grow spiritually. And these truths that I share with you will be shared by the pastor. But if it happens that you're not close to any of our brand churches, all right, any, any church at all, you can go on our website, all right, and, and go on our website, www.vbci.org.uk, www.vbci.org.uk. Click branches and see if there's any of our branches closest to you where you can go and fellowship and they'll teach you these same things that will encourage you and make you grow spiritually. Hey, because we are one church in different locations. So God bless you for today. And until then, I have this word for you. The rest of your days will be the best of your days. God bless you. Shalom. See you next week.